Do you get any, as an American official pushing this uh, issue, is there any, uh, do you have any concern, uh, because not everybody approaches this like an American woman, for example. There, there are different cultures. Uh, how do you avoid that sort of stepping into what might be perceived as cultural imperialism and imposing our values on other societies? Well, the thing about the Asia Pacific region, unlike some other regions of the world, um, is that women are very active in the economy, oftentimes in the informal economy. You know, women are the vast majority of small uh, hold farmers around the world. 60 to 70 percent of the hard work of farming is done by women, whether it's in, you know, rice fields or tending to livestock. So women have historically been seen uh, as supporting the family, as contributing to the family in the informal economy. And certainly there's a, a great uh, tradition of economic activities and uh, in, market, uh, in markets, uh, local markets, um, by women in uh, the economies of the Asia Pacific. So it's the next step. I mean, some of the richest women in the world are women who've started businesses in Asia Pacific economies. So we see that happening. We know it is part of the fabric of societies in the Asia Pacific. And, you know, the challenge now is to make sure that it is an expansive economic uh, uh, platform for uh, women and that we don't do anything uh, that prevents women who have good ideas, who have a good work ethic, who are willing to put their, you know, back to it or their head to it to be able to make a contribution. You know, in other parts of the world, the, the stigma and the obstacles are much greater. But in the Asia Pacific, we have a very strong base on which to build.